This is the story of a sport on the verge of extinction. With its roots embedded in the Australian railways, the gradual decline of the industry has left a dwindling number of the sports practitioners fighting to keep alive a tradition that has been part of their community for 80 years. This is the story of Trugo. It started in the Newport workshops way back in 1925 and the people there, uh, the workers used to play inside the um, railway carriages uh, and hit these, uh, the rubber buffers off the train and uh, they used to get four of them and hit them down the passageway in the carriages during their lunchtime. And the um, concept of true go being that once it went through the door of the carriage, you know, that was a true go. If it hit anything on the way down, it was out. Unique to Melbourne, Trugo grew from a lunchtime pastime for the city's railway workers into a thriving league, played on greens throughout the city's western suburbs. Goalposts replaced the railway carriage doors and were eventually widened to the width of a railway track. In a Trugo match, players hit 12 of the rings or doughnuts from one end of the court and 12 from the other, with a catcher behind each goal to prevent the rings being lost. The winner is the player scoring the highest number of goals, with a rare maximum being 24. I was playing for nine years before I got my first 24 and had three in a row and haven't had any since, and that's four years ago. John McMahon is captain of Yarraville Trugo Club, one of only 11 clubs to have survived from the sport's heyday. And he's well aware of the importance to its players of keeping Trugo alive. A lot of these people here are on their own, their partners have died, and they're just isolated on their own. This is one way out of coming out and having a bit of fun out in the green. The typical age of the sport's player base is obvious. And despite doing away with the previous minimum age requirement of 60, Trugo continues to face the quite literal threat of dying out. It's a problem the game has grown used to dealing with. Each of us keep trying to recruit new members all the time to keep the game alive. And, and look, it's been dying since I've been in it for 12 years and we've managed each year to get a team together and uh, your mates talk to another mate and they'll bring one down and we get another member. At the season-ending singles final, the biggest day on the Trugo calendar, there's proof that the sport hasn't quite run out of steam. Ten different clubs are represented and retired bus driver Reg Williams of Brunswick City is untouchable on the day. Using the popular through the legs tunneling technique, he racks up an impressive total of 22 to take the title. And the ultimate, the ultimate Reg. Well but what does the future hold for this uniquely Australian pastime? Refreshingly, unlike many other minority sports, Trugo has no Olympic aspirations. I think if they did any drug testing on most of our members, none of them would pass the drug test because we're all on some medication of some sort, so it would be pretty hard to get into the Olympic team. It may be in danger of dying out, but this is a truly democratic sport, open to all, irrespective of ability. So if Trugo is up your street and you feel like giving it a go next time you're in Australia, remember who pointed you in the right direction.